All right, next let's talk about construction. Remember we talked about design in the previous video. This one is about construction. The third video will be about installation. So now we're in the middle. We're talking how the shutters are made and painted. So let's begin with, are all shutters made the same way? They all look the same. No, sorry to say, but they're not made all the same way. There's a lot of different ways to build a shutter, even though the outer uh, look of the shutter may be similar or almost always the same. It's the internal part that you can't see that's making the big difference. Um, I know that when we're talking about styles of shutters, this being the style that we've talked about, you know, the, in the whole panel, this piece here going up and down on the shutter, that style is where a lot of the integrity and strength of the whole panel is developed. And in my experience growing up, we hand milled all of our styles. Those things can be real long, they're thin pieces of wood, it's not easy to keep them flat and straight, but because of the hand milling process, we took each individual piece of wood, flat dressed it across a joiner, run them through thickness plane, checked them, redressed them, checked them, and kept milling them down until we got to the final thickness and that those things were good and straight. That's one way to build the components in a shutter. However, something that began to be developed in, a, I'd say, maybe the late 80s or so, we started seeing the advent of mill molded components. People began making just the components, buy a box of styles, buy a box of rails, buy boxes of louvers that came from a molding mill. Now what that means is they would take lumber boards and they had some exotic ways of multiple saw blades on a saw, run that entire board through that saw into smaller rippings and then they go straight into a molder and that molder would just take them and mill them down and give them the profile that you see around the edge of a shutter. Uh, and so those components we would take, but we noticed when we got them, we'd look down them and these things, some of them were like buggy whips, some of them were like snakes and wiggled, and they just were everything but straight. Every once in a while you'd run across a straight one, but it was kind of rare. And so we had to develop an exotic way of pairing up styles that two panels would come together, would lay flat so that these curves in these styles, a lot of times you'd have one curved one way and another one that was curved the other way and they came together in the middle of a window, you could stick a pencil between them and all this daylight would try to come through. So it was a real tough way to uh, build a shutter using these components, but it was a cheaper way to build a shutter and people were always looking for a cheaper product. So we uh, attempted to build shutters with these particular components, but it really just was a, a hard thing to do, and we finally abandoned the idea. But there was something that was being done in the door industry that I knew about, and it was that uh, entry doors had the same tendency of the door styles would warp and be curved and such, and so they started coming up with what they called a solid core interior for the door. In other words, what they did is they took solid blocks of wood and would join these together and then wrap it the whole big style with a veneer of about a quarter of an inch thickness. And that led for a lot straighter, more stable uh, door style and hence a better entry door. And I actually uh, put some on my home and, and had become familiar with the process. And I wanted to take that same technology and use it in making shutter styles, but we were a small mill and it was very difficult to underwrite the expense of doing that. Well, other companies started coming up with these techniques in their shutters. One company, Norman, from uh, an international company, had a great product. Uh, this is a sample of what they had. And this is what's known as a laminated core. And what we want you to see is that the core of this style is little strips, one sixteenth of an inch wide, with the grain opposite turned each other, every other one, and glued together. That create the core of this style, and then it's wrapped in a quarter inch veneer around it. What's interesting about that is that now these styles are much straighter, much stronger, they're not as flexible, they're stiffer. 
And so it was a great way to build a shutter. Um, they also have uh, developed some things known as uh, uh, MDF material. Uh, MDF is this thing that's made out of wood dust. Uh, it's used a lot in the uh, window sills in your home and various trims, things in the cabinetry that especially if it's being painted, uh, it makes for a good structure. The only thing about MDF is it loves water. And if it's not sealed good or it gets a chance to get water to it, like a window seal after a hurricane can swell up just simply because of the wind pushing water up under that window, that MDF begins to swell because it loves water and it'll attract it like a sponge. Um, Norman makes a, a shutter that's an MDF shutter. They, they wrap it though with a polypropylene film wrap, seal all the other edges, and it makes for a, a stiffer uh, material. It's a less expensive material. It does make for a good shutter. It's one of their most popular designs, but it does have some limitations. One, it's heavy, and so it doesn't yield itself to having wide uh, type activity. Uh, one thing that we want to talk about uh, in the in the styles, uh, you know, I mentioned different types of cores. There's different structures, and uh, let's go ahead and start talking about the louvers because it's the same type of technology, and I want to explain a little bit of the difference here. Well, a louver again is the thing that uh, this piece right here is a louver. It's also known as a slat synonymous some people call them one others call them the other uh, those are the things that if you have a wide panel they're going to be long louvers okay a lot of companies don't want to make wide panels because their louvers don't have a tendency to stay straight and so you get this problem of louver warpage and so a lot of people have had that problem in the past and they go i never want to see another wood shutter in my house again because they had some really serious issues with it well let me try to put some light on that subject wood's not necessarily the problem it's the moisture getting to the wood that creates the problem once water gets into a wood louver, uh, the heat of the window is going to cause that moisture to migrate down the grain of the style, and it's going to get in there, and it begins to cause that louver to have uh, a twist, flex, camber, does all kind of crazy stuff. But the problem, that problem can be cured. We didn't use um, synthetic materials in building our shutters. We used all wood materials. We just made sure we handpicked, got the straightest materials, and then the secret to stopping the warpage was painting the wood properly, sealing the wood. Because what happens is that wood, and you can always feel a shutter on the edge of the louver, if it's rough, what that is is the little wood fibers are sticking out. And those little wood fibers are like candle wicks. They're sitting there sucking moisture into that wood. And when it does, that's where the problems be, uh, begin. But if the shutter is sanded and sealed on the edges real good, and moisture can't get in, then you've done a lot to stopping any kind of problems in the future. Uh, but let's talk about other ways to maintain louver stability in wide panels. One great thing that I saw in the Norman products is, and I think and believe they're still the only company today that uses this technique, is called the utilization of quarter sawn material. Now quarter sawn is a term that was used mostly in the floor industry, and it has to do with how that wood was milled into lumber. You take a big tree, and however long it may be, 18, 20 feet long, and they, you know, if you ever saw the old TV show Waltons, they had that, that sawmill there. And there was just a, a table with a big blade on that sucker. And they'd lay these big old tree logs on there and just start pushing these logs through that saw blade and just slabbing off boards like salami and a, and a delicatessen. And so that's how most lumber was made. And what that does, that yields a random grain pattern because you're starting with this round log. You got narrow boards, they start getting bigger as you get to the center of the tree. And then as you come back across, they start getting smaller again. Well, that leaves a different grain pattern in each part of those uh, pieces of lumber. You get into long grain and then it's more flexible, it's not as stiff, but there's a process known as quarter sawn. 
And what this is, it makes the, the uh, lumber stiffer. And that's why it was used in the flooring industry, because you walk on floors and you need something that's stiff and stable. Plus, that particular type of grain pattern stains better and looks prettier. So what that is, is taking that big old log of a tree, and instead of just slabbing the boards off in random patterns, they take the big log and they cut it into pie shapes, quarter sections, and then they cut the lumber out this way. What that does is it makes the grain run the same direction on each of the boards. So in Norman shutters, what they like to do is all their louvers are milled with the grain running up and down on every louver. That's kind of like the, you know, the baseball bat principle where you've got, uh, you know, always swing the bat with the label up if you're using a wood bat. And because the grain is turned so that it's facing that ball, in other words, the pressure is pushing against the grain, which is the stiffest part of that particular piece of wood. Same technology and concept is used in the construction of the louver. With that grain working to keep that louver stiff and straight, it cuts down on the twisting, warping, and all those sort of things. And so it's a great way to build a louver because it'll let you go out to wider spans without having to you make narrow panels. And so you don't have the problems with the quarter on louvers as much because they're just naturally stiffer. And so that's a great way to do it. You can go up to panels up to 42 inches wide using quarter saw material. Another way to get louver stiffness is with a process known as finger joining. Finger joining is taking two small pieces of wood and knife cutting them into what things that look like fingers. And that these fingers are then brought together and they're glued and so that you create this finger joint which makes the wood stiffer again. Another way to improve the ability to make a louver wider. Another process is known as laminated. Uh, laminated is taking two thin pieces of wood and then putting them together this way. And there's a, a shutter company, uh, O'Hare, that is noted for using this process because they have found that this lamination process makes for the strongest type of a louver, and they can go up to 50 inches wide with their shutters because of the laminated process. All right, and so there's just all kinds of different ways and you make these shutters, you don't know what's underneath that paint, you don't know what's working and what's not working and why this shutter is better than another shutter. And so that's why you need a good dealer that understands all these types of questions and concepts so we can help you select the right product that's gonna give you the right functionality and give you the longevity that you're looking for. Still some other designs we talked about is that polypropylene, the MDF, those products make for a good shutter. It's not the best shutter, but it's an economical approach to building a shutter. And what it does is that it allows you to have some nice spans, but you can't go real wide with those. And you got some limitation because the material's heavier and as it gets wider, it begins to want to sag. So those panels are cut off at a certain width, usually 29 to 30 inches, much wider than that, and you start running the risk of having some issues. Still another technique and type of uh, louver uh, material is what's known as synthetic materials. A lot of people say, oh, that's better than wood. We want synthetic, it won't ever warp, it won't ever do this, that, and the other. And it's true that it, it can be a viable approach. But it depends again on what type of synthetic material you're talking about. If you're talking about a, uh, um, a polywood type shutter, which is a poly, plastic PVC outer shell with a foam filled material that goes in to add stiffness to the PVC. That stiffness is added a lot of weight to that louver and there again they can't make the real wide panels in that type of material because it begins to sag. So you've got those kind of issues going on. You've got companies that uh, I think Vinyl Built and some others that were in the marketplace that's just solely a vinyl shutter, a 100% pure plastic shutter, hollow in the louvers, hollow in the styles, a very lightweight, flexible, and not a necessarily a, a good uh, approach for a long-term shutter to last. Uh, dealing with those uh, still synthetic materials, there's also other companies, I think Sunland is one in particular, they use a foam-filled um, 
synthetic material, but to uh, retard the flexibility, they actually put an aluminum insert into their styles and into their louvers to help stiffen them up. And so it, there's just, uh, there's a lot of different products that are out there and we can help you select the one that's gonna make the right choice for your situation. Another important aspect of building a shutter is how is it all held together? Well, this is the rail up here. This is again is the style. Now then the question is, how do you make this rail stick to that style? That's the question at hand. And they all seem to stay together, but there's some different things going on under the surface here that you need to be aware of. Uh, one of the ways to build a shutter is with a mortise and tenon joint. What this amounts to is, is you got a solid piece of wood that's been cut specially. This piece is part of this wood and it goes and is into this, inserted into this part of the machine part of the style in a very tight fit with adhesives so that it holds together. This is known as one of the industry's strongest joints here. It's a furniture joint, and it allows the shutter to be very strong, very stiff, very durable, so that when you have these wide spans and that type of a joint, it's very difficult for what we call the joint or the rail to break and to begin to droop and sag. Some of you probably have shutters that have kind of broken loose and have begun to drag on the seals and such, and that's the reason for it is because of the joint section. A lot of companies in the past, all they used were dowel and glue, and so that's another technique that's used to put the shutter together. Uh, another process that's becoming more popular is what's known as a dovetail. A dovetail is a little different approach, but it's just basically a, the, the, a special tenon that instead of being flat and straight is, is a dovetail, which means it's narrow here and wider out here, and it actually slides into the style, into a groove that was already cut into the style, and it makes for a very strong and secure joint. So you've got those particular things going on in the shutter panel that uh, adds value to it, and so you want to be aware of these type of things. Another thing is the tilt rod. That's that stick on the front. And what you want to be aware of is, and some of you know about this problem, these things are held together with these staples. What kind of staples are being used? Are they steel staples? Are they wire staples? Are they a plastic staple? And some people don't even use staples. Some use insert strip bars into the tilt rod. There's all kinds of ways to try to build a better tilt rod onto the shutter. Um, in our day, the staple here was a steel staple, and it was known as uh, you know vinyl coated, which means the edge of the staple had a vinyl on it that when the gun shot it into the louver, it actually heated up and turned into a glue and became an, an adhesive. If we had what we were known as convergent staples, I mean divergent staples and convergent staples. These are staples that came closer together at the point, divergent, they, they moved away. And so one was put into the tilt rod and the other type of staple was put into the louver so that they're actually pulling somewhat against each other, making for a stronger uh, type of a, a system of adhering that tilt rod to the louvers. But a lot of people don't like the tilt rods on the front anymore, and so we go to the uh, clear view, hidden linkage. Um, that's a, a different animal that also has the option of, you know, with that uh, little linkage in the back that holds everything together. Now this is a pretty secure linkage. This is probably a little better than a, a tilt rod on the front linkage. Very durable, provided that they use screws in here instead of little uh, nail brads. The nail brads get loose after a while and can come out and fall out. And, uh, and so it just really depends. A lot of times this isn't a metal linkage back here. Some people use even a PVC linkage I've seen, and those are just not something you wanna be dealing with. Uh, another thing that's done is um, with the invisible tilt, it's a, it's a good feature uh, because there's no exposed linkages either front or back. Everything is contained in the style. 
This is where all the action is going on internally in, into that style right there. And so uh, it's a good system. Is, a, is it as strong as the invisible tilt system? Depends on which invisible tilt system we're comparing it to. This one holds up real good. The only time I've seen any problems with this is when there's some young children in the house, let's say between the ages of two and five maybe, where what they'll do is they'll grab one louver and then they'll grab another louver up here and they'll push this louver down and they'll push this one up. And when you do that, it causes uh, or can cause the gear mechanism to jump time on there and then the louvers get out of sync. It's repairable, it's not a big issue, and it only comes up in very rare occasions. Otherwise, it's a very good uh, linkage system. So we've talked about the, the various things about the, the style construction. We've talked about louver construction. We've also talked about uh, the other factors uh, that are important to the shutter. And one left that we want to really talk about is the finishing process. Now this is a very, could be a lengthy part of the discussion. Let's just hit the overview on the top side of it, it is that there needs to be, the more paint you put on there, the better off you're basically going to be. Norman uses, uh, they say, six coats of finish, two prime coats, and four top coats, and a lot of sanding in between. Uh, that's very important to get the wood completely sealed and to give it a very smooth finish. But there's other companies out there that are coming up with other uh, processes and different primers and different advances in the technology, and they're getting a very smooth surface as well. The Window Outfitters is a company that's really been developing their process, and the finishing is just an extremely smooth uh, approach with a lot of film buildup, meaning the thickness of the of the primers and the paint that's actually going on that surface. So painting is important. Uh, I personally have had a lot of experience with the feeling of the surface, and I can tell rather quickly whether that shutter has been finished properly. Most companies, and, and you have to really watch this, if it's a, especially a, a domestic local company, the likelihood is that they're not putting a whole lot of primer or paint on that particular product. These local companies are competing with the uh, international companies, uh, and so they can't afford to spend as much labor as these other companies do, so therefore they cut down the amount of primer, sanding, and top coats that go on. So just be aware that uh, a shutter may look like a shutter, but on the longevity side, depending on how it was constructed, is going to affect how it performs over time. One other factor that I want to bring to your note, uh, attention is a concept that uh, Norman uh, has brought into the marketplace. It's the only company that I know that does this. They're big enough. They're probably the largest shutter manufacturer in the world still today, and they still build an extremely good product. And they offer some features that only can be uh, you know, offered by them. You can only get that feature by buying their particular product. Uh, in the construction, one thing that they do and they found it's important is since they sell to people all over the planet in the European markets and Australia and in Ch other time, you know, all over the planet their shutters are being sold. Especially like in the United States, you know, Gulf Coast area, we got a lot of moisture down here. Go out to Las Vegas and Palm Desert and out there, man, it is dry, dry, dry. Well, what's so important about that? Well, no matter how you build a shutter, there's going to be moisture in that wood. Now, having moisture is not bad. It just depends on how much you have. And what happens is they find that if you send the same shutter to the Gulf Coast that you send to the desert, you're going to have problems in one area because the shutter's not acclimated to the environment that it's going to be ending up in. And so Norman uses warehouses that mimic the environment that the shutter is going in so that they can get the same kind of moisture content that naturally occurs in that climate. So therefore when the shutter arrives it's more like the, uh, the normal environment and so there's not the expansion and contraction and the breaking of hairline fractures in the joints from the paint, not because there's a structural problem, it's just the expansion of the wood slightly breathing and this shutter is already 
in that environment so you cut down on the, the amount of change that may take place. So these are just some of the things to, to do, be aware of when you're looking at your shutters. Remember we're talking about the DCI approach which is the design, the construction, and the installation. The next video in this series is going to deal with installation so stay tuned and if you have any questions don't hesitate to give us a call. Schedule that no obligation in-home visit and we'll be glad to come out and discuss all these things with you and educate you as to what's available so you can make the right decision for your family.